Well, welcome everyone to a how to play video on flesh and blood. In this ongoing series, we are going to look at a specific hero and deck archetype in order to learn the 10,000 foot view and how to play. Following each video and over the next few weeks, I will try to play that deck in tournaments or in gameplay uh, in order for you to see some gameplay video. So make sure you hit subscribe and follow along with the channel in order to refine your idea of this deck and learn my experience with it. These videos should not be seen as a series in order to hone the skills needed to win the road to nationals with all these heroes. Rather, this is a way to learn more about flesh and blood from the perspective of trying out a new hero for the first time. I'll connect with others in the community and try to link their work in the comments as well. This first deck, Runeblade One Turn Kill, was highlighted on the official Flesh and Blood channel at the beginning of 2021. It saw a quick blip in play in the early skirmish season, but its representation in the meta has since died off. If you're looking for a reminder on this guide while playing, a text version is available as well. Head to cavdanesmarket.com slash heroes and thank you to Tanner Jelinski, a fantastic fan of Flesh and Blood and a stellar member of the Kitchen Table TCG community for putting in a lot of time to help make these guides. So first off, what is the goal of OTK Viscerai? Well, OTK, again, means one turn kill. And this is a go tall deck, meaning that it aims to create big attacks instead of multiple small attacks or going wide. In this one turn kill deck, it's actually all done, of course, on one turn. The main goal of the deck is to create enough rune chant tokens to combo into a large attack and kill your opponent in one turn. You do this by playing very, very defensively and by planning and plotting your final turn. One of the things that was mentioned on the official Flesh and Blood YouTube video was that you should consider every life as if it were a turn. You will often find yourself at one or two life left when you finalize your turn and hopefully win the game. So how do you do this? Well, first of all, you're going to have to have plenty of defensive cards that generate rune chant tokens. That's why this deck runs all three colors of Reduce to Rune Chant, a defense reaction that additionally creates the rune chants that we need to finish the game with. In addition, very quickly, these reduced to rune chants will be free to play as we have generated plenty of tokens and we will not be using them until the final turn of the game, of course, hopefully when we win. We will also run Sync Below in blue and in red. Some decks will even throw in the yellow version as well. Sync Below may not generate rune chant tokens, but it does block damage and it's free to play. This can be used for clutch defense turns when you're low on defense reactions and your opponent decides to use a lot of attack reactions. Looking at you, Dorinthia. Additionally, this card lets us filter out cards later in the game to set up our hands well for our final turn. The final blocking card is my personal favorite card in the deck, Rune Blood Barrier. This is one of those cards that will win you the game simply by confusing your opponent. They are setting up for their next turn, and with Rune Blood Barrier, you force them to make a decision that they don't want to make. This is the perfect card to play when you have low life and your opponent is setting up for their kill turn. I see it as almost a bonus turn, and in this deck, every turn matters so much. At the same time, it's not all upside. Playing this card can be a double-edged sword if it's not used correctly. It can set you far back so that you won't be able to recover for a one turn kill. The best part of the Viscerai OTK deck is that it's quite simple. You block, you generate tokens, until you're ready to go in for the kill. But before we get to part two of the deck, there are a few cards that I want to highlight as very important pieces. Reaping Blade is quite perfect in your deck as your weapon. You will almost always be at lower health than your opponent, which means that they will not be able to gain life. Essentially, this locks out key cards that are so popular, like the Red Sigil of Solace, it just becomes a very poor one red pitch card with no alternative action. I also advise that you run Sigil Solace and Sunkiss because every life matters. Every life you're able to gain buys you another turn to generate tokens and filter through your deck to set up your one turn kill. Okay, so let's get to part two, the setup of the one turn kill. Your opponent's going to be at 20 life. It's possible that they will have a little bit of a higher life if they were able to pull off a sigil before you lost any life in the game. This is where the math really comes down to play. You have to time your turn well. Being at one or two life, you can miss your win very quickly. Depending on your opponent and their class and their hero choice, your goal should be to generate around 22 to 30 rune chant tokens before your first attack. And this will be your only attack. 
When you attack, you'll be attacking for 9, and you'll be using 9th Blade of the Blood Oath, which swings for 9 damage. If you're lucky enough to pump it with a Slogism, it would be 13 damage. A second way to add to this combo is to set up with Chains of Eminence, which allows you to prevent your opponent from using one of their equipment cards to block. Or you can gamble by calling out a card that they might have in their hand. A solid card to call out is actually Sigil of Solace. Reaping Blade prevents your opponent from being able to gain life for most of the chunk of the game. But if they pitch them, then they will more than likely have one or two available to use at the end of game, which can be very devastating given how rune chants are resolved as separate sources of damage. This would cause them to gain life and maybe confuse your math. Essentially though, you are attacking for either 9 or 13 damage. And then in addition, when you attack, you have 22 to 30 rune chant tokens that are going to swing as well. This means that you will be swinging for between 31 and 43 damage on your one turn kill. Now let's talk about how to do the math. Your opponent only needs to run one null rune equipment because they can block each rune chant token individually as we reviewed earlier. If they have four cards available to pitch, they would be able to potentially block 12 of the rune chants via pitching the cards in their hands. This leaves them with their arsenal and equipment to block the 9 attack from 9th blade. It's very important that you do the math on your turn. You count the amount of damage that they can block with equipment. Is it 3 or is it 4? This means that your attack action might deal 5 damage. Well, how many rune chants do you have? If they can pitch for 9, are you able to deal 15 or more damage to their life total? These are the questions that you have to ask before you commit to your attack. Once you commit, there's no going back. This is your one turn to kill. This is one of those decks that's very easy to understand, but requires some practice to hone in. Your turns building up to the one turn kill can feel kind of linear, but every block, every life gain, and every defense reaction card that you play counts to this final decision that you have to make, which makes every action huge. My advice is to sit down at the kitchen table with some of your friends and just run the deck over and over again, allowing you to learn when is the best time to attack for your one turn kill. Hey, thanks for watching this video and thanks to the Kitchen Table TCG community for all of your insights in building this deck. Tanner Jelinski has put together an outline for Viscerai that's available for you to view at cavdanesmarket.com slash heroes if you need to revisit some of the main points at a later time. The first time I saw this deck in action was actually playing against Zach McCallow, who has been essential as well for me to understand some of the intricacies of the deck. Thanks a bunch to Tanner and Zach and thanks for being part of the community. If you're looking for a place to play and to enjoy some amazing conversations with members of the Flesh and Blood community, head over to patreon.com slash kitchen table TCG to support the channel and get access to the Discord server as well as the collection tracker and discounts on box and case breaks. Thanks so much for being a viewer of the channel. You really are making my dream come true. Remember to be kind to the people around you.